This is How Do You Do It? I'm going to talk today to you about the Coleman Road Trip 40 quart power chill cooler. Uh, it's a great little unit. I've had it for over 10 years. I've only used it for cooling, um, but you can uh, flip the cord between red and blue. I'll show you that in a little bit. And uh, red means it's a warming unit, uh, blue means it's a cooling unit. Today I'm going to tell you just quickly about how I use it and a little bit, you know, some of the the marketing and, and and you know what Coleman says about the unit but why I really made the video is mine stopped working or stopped working well and so I'm gonna zoom in and show you how I went about figuring out what was wrong with it I'm gonna go over three possible or common problems all right I zoomed in on the box here because you know this little marketing is just provides a, a, a set of talking points for me um, my box, like I said, is over 10 years old, so yours may be different, but uh, I'm going to cover some of the things that it says about it and, and how I use this cooler. So first of all, the main use I use for the cooler is I keep it in my house, um, it, like when I have a party, and I have ice coolers, but, you know, this just provides me more or extra capacity. So, you know, I'll get my ice cold beer out of my ice cooler, but then um, I can either pre-chill things or or keep some pop or some you know, two liter bottles or something in, in the Coleman. And then um, it's just, you know, less going in and out of refrigerator or my ice coolers and, and, and just sometimes I need more. The other two most common ways I use the cooler is uh, one on camping trips. So, you know, be out on the table when we're camping. And um, the third way is just in the car itself. You can use it while you're going to your destination or if you want to use it on a day trip. Um, so Coleman says this holds 44 cans of beer or soda that wouldn't be in the carton. You'd have to take them out and space them properly, but um, it, it does hold a lot. And um, it says it cools up to 40 degrees below surroundings, and that's kind of important. So I'm going to get into this when I'm talking about the common problems, but um, coolers like this, the Coleman, I actually have another smaller one that I use on my console or my dash. Um, they use what's called a Peltier or Peltier um, module or Peltier uh, process for cooling. And what that is, it's, it's like a chip and you, um, you apply current, you know, positive and negative to each side of the chip. And one side of the chip gets hot, one side gets cold. And that's why this can be used as a heater or a cooler. I'm going to show you later when I get into the problems, um, the orientation to that. But uh, basically you, you can uh, flip the cord. Here, I got the cord prop right here. And you see blue is for cooling, turn it over. Red is for heating, and this plugs into the Coleman unit. So I've only used it for cool. You gotta plug it in the right way, you plug it in the wrong way, you think you're cool and you're pop and you're making it warm. But uh, it's not that hard to do. And then another thing I wanted to let you know is like I told you, it. it uh, Okay, I drew this little diagram, and I've got it next to my cooler here, just to show you how these thermoelectric coolers actually work, like what their cooling source is. So this is a drawing, but this is your uh, Peltier, Peltier module, and you can look them up online, and you can buy them in numerous, numerous online websites or selling these things. Um, it's important to get one that's matched for the size of your cooler so when you take your cooler out you can see the chip and see the numbers on it and um, and make sure you buy the right capacity because they're very powerful chips okay they can be they're actually used mainly from what I've seen to like cool CPU units but they also provide you know a, a, a great uh, source of hot and cold for the thermal electric coolers um, how they work is you know you just put a current across them and if you, you know, put the current positive to negative, um, the, the one side of the ceramic or the chip will get cold, the other side will get uh, hot. It turns out, just like how this cord I showed you uh, works, if you flip the blue and the red, you're in effect to the internals of the wiring of this cooler, flipping the, um, the leads on the Peltier module, and, uh, and the opposite sides are getting hot and cold and that's why the same the same Peltier module can be used as a cooler or a heater now like I said these chips can be 
um, really powerful, made for like industrial uses. So you don't want to, uh, if you end up having to change this chip, you don't want to um, necessarily, you don't want to put the wrong one in there, like one that's overpowered. You might think, well, I can cool better. But, you know, it's kind of like the warning you, you've heard before, don't try this at home. Um, if you have, you know, if you don't have enough heat transfer capacity, for example, you, you can end up frying your chip or melting something or catching something on fire. So there's my disclaimer to you. But um, on, on the whole, this Peltier process is pretty cool. Let me show you one more diagram now and show you how it integrates with the cooler. And then I'll get into talking about the problems. All right, I drew this little diagram, so before we get into the cooler, you can just get an understanding of what's going on here. So um, first, the walls of your cooler, this is greatly magnified. Your walls of your cooler are around here where I'm pointing, up and down. And you've got a fan inside and outside of the cooler, just for heat transfer, really. Okay, and then nestled inside the internals here, we've got our Peltier module and two heat sinks. And a heat sink is just a chunk of metal, okay? And it's more or less flat and solid where it touches the peltier because it's trying to absorb that heat and, and cooling. Um, you know, it's, it's basically taking the heat from one side and, and um, away from the inside of the cooler and exhausting it, if you will, uh, just by the wind blowing or the heat transfer to the outside. Um, so the... It's a solid chunk of metal where it touches the peltier, but then there are fins. So I try to represent these notches as fins. Um, and I'll, I'll show you one as soon as we get into there. Um, then importantly, uh, between the peltier and the heat transfers is thermoelectric paste. It, it's like a white paste. It's basically designed to en enhance the heat transfer. So if you took that paste away, the, the heat transfer just would not be as good. Um, you, you need that paste. And in fact, I changed the paste on this one and I'm uh, kind of as a tune-up. It turned out not to be what was wrong with the cooler, but um, um, it's, it's, it's a very important element. If you end up taking this apart, you're going to want to have that thermoelectric paste. You can buy it online. Um, generally, or most common uses, I think, of these Peltier uh, modules are for heating and cooling CPUs, like in computers. So I found my little syringe of uh, thermoelectric paste and you see that tray there, that's pretty important because for the heat transfer across the Peltier to work, the fan on the inside and on the outside, um, I mean, you're never going to achieve that, that optimum temperature difference that, you know, is advertised. Um, but the best you can do is make sure, you know, your Peltier is working with the, you know, it's in full working order and your, your fans are in full working order and, and you don't obstruct any of the... Um, airflow. So anyway, this is pretty important to leave in there. I mean, of course, you know what you're doing. You can put something in there and make sure it won't touch. Uh, I mean, you're okay, but that's the reason why that tray is there, to keep things away from the fan and the cooling unit so it can circulate in the cooler. Okay, and then this cover actually, uh, make me a liar now, it just pulls off. Um, it's, it's not attached with any screws. And in here, now you'll see is our first fan and our first um, heat sink or chunk of metal. Like I said, it's flat on the one side and it has fins on the other. And if you look closely there, you'll see those screws. Those screws go through to the outside and, and screw into the uh, other heat sink where the Peltier is, is nestled in between. Okay, let me uh, go to the outside unit. Take I have to take three screws off. And um, we'll show you that side, and then we'll wrap this up with the problems uh, summary. Okay, so on to the problems. Um, I found three, three main sources of possible problems when I was trying to fix my cooler, and one of them was really my root cause. But the three are, one, the power supply itself, two, the airflow and the fans, and then three, the Peltier module, the thermoelectric grease, and the... And the, and the the cooling capacity itself. So the power supply turned out to be my problem and I'm going to show you what I mean. So um, I have the power cord that comes from the wall unit right here and then I also have a 12 volt power supply. Now I actually found this the first time 
by just using a voltmeter. Okay, I've got it on what 20 volts DC, and um, you have a, a red lead and a black lead. And I'm not showing you that because to do it on camera, to get those leads, you know, one is in the center of this plug and one is the edge of the the surrounding case of the plug, and it, it was just kind of cumbersome. So, but um, you'll see when I plug it in, and you'll hear the sound of of what I mean. So first, I'm going to plug it in to my regulated power supply, which is 12 volts. It measures a little higher, but you can hear how loud and see how fast that goes. And then, so I hope you can hear that. And then I'm going to plug it into, now both of these are plugged into the same wall outlet, so I mean that's not super important, but that's 120 volt AC. Then I plug it into That's the power adapter that I bought with the Coleman cooler. You see how the fan's blowing slower? And I'll also tell you the same electric current is going across the Peltier. So I'm getting less cooling and I'm getting less airflow. And those combined are giving me a problem. Now it turns out my cooler would work fine in the car, but I don't use it very much in the car. I use it in the house a lot of times. So let me turn it on again here and you'll see. So you can hear and see the difference. Um, so it was working okay in the car, but I, you know, here, here's the thing. I use it in the house. I use it every year or every month. And I plugged it in. I'm like, okay, but the stuff wasn't getting cold. And I was like, oh. You know, it took me a while to figure it out that, you know, because I don't recognize that it's running a little slower. Um, just, you know, all of a sudden it's not working and I start digging into it. And then I realized, I realized uh, what was going on here. Okay, let me cover now a little bit with the, the fans or the blowers. So the, the fan blades there on the inside and the outside, you know, and they spin. And they're basically on a common axle. And there's a little electric motor in there. So there's not a lot that can go wrong with that. I mean, well, well actually, you, you could clean that axle. There was, you know, hair and fur if you have pets or animals. Um, you could... You could oil that. I mean, being careful, you understand how to oil an electric motor. Don't, you know, you don't want the oil in the motor. You want the oil in the axle, and just make sure it's unobstructed, that it's moving free. And I mean, I guess your motor could go bad, but I, I don't even know how you'd replace, you know, find a matching a matching part for that. But um, I, I've seen a lot of people building their own coolers, <laughs> and they put, you know, uh, really, really powerful jacked up. Uh, like fans for computers in there. I'm looking around here because I, I actually have one. Oh, here it is. Yeah, so I'm not recommending or saying you should do that, but um, you know, this mower blows considerably more than that mower. It wouldn't fit in here and I don't want to put it in here. But um, you know, if you were making your own, I've seen other videos about people making their own coolers. Um, you know, you can, you can buy fans and I have those, I have some of those fans here. I, I, I've got them that run off 12 volts and I've got them that run off 120 uh, AC. So, um, you know, they sell them both ways. Okay, last thing to talk about is if you want to get into the Peltier chip itself. So, I talked about it, but if you take these two screws out, and they're, they're long threaded screws, and they go through uh, both of the heat sinks and through the area that has, there's some, you know, plastic or rubber and, and the chip itself. And you could take that all apart. Now, I'm not taking it apart because I just took it apart. <laughs> and I just bought new paste and reassembled it. And I felt my chip, I mean, you could, I guess, measure the temperature gradient. But I, I my chip was in good working order. And uh, my paste was old and cakey and cracked. So it did make an improvement by replacing that paste. Um, and let me just show you kind of what that's what that's like. Um, all right, so I've got some materials here. So if you, you see, I got a piece of metal, flat metal. That kind of represents the the backside of those heat sinks. And then I've got a, a a piece of shiny white, and that kind of represents the material that you you'd find that the Peltier is made of. And so when you buy the 
syringe or however it comes of your thermoelectric you just squeeze it on there and then you, it comes with uh, some kind of an applicator it's like a piece of clear plexiglass and you just smooth it nice and flat like that and you mate the two pieces and you'll do that on both sides one on one side of the peltier to the heat sink and one on the other side of the peltier to the heat sink I used half the syringe on one side and half the other and then just was very careful when I assembled the old thing the whole thing and and put it back in um, and like I said I just I mean you can get the the thermoelectric paste for uh, under ten dollars um, my power supply that I ended up having a a problem with um, if you bought the Coleman part number it would probably cost you quite a bit um, you know any original equipment part number uh, costs more but it's just a 120 volt AC to 12 volt DC um, a, a, a conventional adapter as long as you get the right uh, leads on the end you know it's cigarette lighter lead um, I found that actually for less than five dollars online just shopping through stores um, that's all I got for today. I, I hope this helps you out. Uh, my cooler is working a lot better, and uh, I think I'm going to chill me some road sodies and give it a give it a whirl. Thanks.